he was a master at work. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 John Hurt scenes. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be taking a look at the celebrated actor's greatest and most memorable film and TV moments. Number 10. Be Suspicious, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy In this adaptation of John le Carre's 1974 novel, Hurt plays Control, the head of British intelligence, who believes one of his top operatives is a Soviet agent. There's a rotten apple, Jim. And we have to find it. In this flashback, we see Control detail his theory to British agent Jim Predo, before Predo travels to Hungary for an ill-fated trip which sets off the events of the story. Balancing clear sadness with obvious trepidation, Hurt ticks off his list of suspects, giving ominous meaning to the movie's title by doing so. On the fifth. Smiley. Number 9. The War Doctor's Farewell, Doctor Who Playing a previously unknown incarnation of the Doctor, John Hurt's War Doctor is a warrior caught in the middle of the Time War, and having travelled alongside 10 and 11, his final scene in the 50th anniversary episode becomes a bittersweet farewell. Well, gentlemen, it has been an honour and a privilege. Reflecting on their efforts to save Gallifrey, the War Doctor realises that he won't remember how the plan unfolded, but he is content knowing that he did the right thing. I have to live with that. But for now, for this moment, I am the Doctor again. Not that he gets long to dwell on the matter. Mere moments inside the TARDIS and he's regenerating into Nine. I hope the ears are a bit less conspicuous this time. Number 8. Suttler's Introduction, V for Vendetta Following the destruction of the Old Bailey at the hands of V, the giant looming face of High Chancellor Adam Suttler begins barking orders to his subordinates. Gentlemen, you have had four hours, you had better have results. And Hurt tackles the dictator's dialogue with venom and complete contempt for his lackeys, ordering Tchaikovsky to be blacklisted and spinning the Old Bailey, bombing into an emergency demolition. DCD was Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. Added to the blacklist. I never want to hear that music again. Playing a huge disembodied head of state, Hurt's performance is eerily reminiscent of Big Brother in 1984. But, uh, we'll get more on that later. Doubt will plunge this country back into chaos, and I will not let that happen. Number 7. Wand Shopping, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Ollivander's one shot provides one of the most magical and memorable moments from the entire Harry Potter series, largely thanks to John Hare's performance. I wondered when I'd be seeing you, Mr. Potter. Not only does this scene give Harry a taste of his inner power, it also makes crystal clear the bond between the boy wizard and Voldemort, whose wands carry a feather from the same phoenix. It is curious that you should be destined for this wand when its brother gave you that scar. Hurt is captivating as the master wand maker, imbuing the character with great wisdom and a twinkle-eyed charm to reassure any Hogwarts student who passes through his shop. He who must not be named did great things. Terrible. Yes. Number 6. At the Diner with Ronnie, Love and Death on Long Island in this tale about celebrity obsession, Hurt plays Giles, a lonely British writer who becomes infatuated with a young American actor, Ronnie Bostock. Rambo? Arthur Rambo. After pursuing his idol, this climactic scene sees Giles confess his love to Ronnie, suggesting that his current relationship with his girlfriend won't last. Ronnie, your relationship with Audrey is hardly likely to last forever. But a visibly moved Ronnie rejects his advances, leaving Giles alone in the diner, with desperation and heartache etched onto Hurt's face. You must know how completely, how desperately, I love you. Number 5. Quinton's Dream, The Naked Civil Servant as Quentin Crisp, the flamboyant writer and raconteur, Hurt shines as a homosexual man growing up in conservative England. I love you. Darling, you do realize. I don't care. In this scene, Crisp has a heart to heart with a female friend who has just declared her platonic love and admiration for him. In response, Crisp divulges his ultimate dream a great dark man whose love Crisp hopes to win, although he knows that society would never allow it. I dream of a great dark man. 
a real man, enormously strong, enormously virile, whose love I shall win. Crisp's yearning for true love is evident, yet he remains pragmatic and painfully frank. The dream is only a dream. There is no great dark man. Number four, Caligula's return, I, Claudius. Having waged war on Neptune and upon returning to the Senate, here we see John Hurt's Emperor Caligula rant and rave over the lack of celebration greeting his arrival, even though he explicitly requested no celebrations be held. Who spent all their time in the theatre and in the baths, while he has spent six months living no better than a private soldier? Hurt nails the crazed emperor's gradual crescendo from self-important leader to unpredictable madman, creating a subtle but terrifying mood, exacerbated when he draws his sword with murderous intent. Your emperor has returned, but with this in his hand! And just in case his insanity is in doubt, Hurt shows off his seashell spoils from the war. Loot from old Neptune. <laughs> he won't take me on again in a hurry. Number three, Room 101, 1984. Having been arrested by the Thought Police in a dystopic future world, Winston Smith is taken to Room 101 for the high tension ending of this George Orwell adaptation. The thing that is in Room 101 is the worst thing in the world. A torture chamber individually designed with the victim's worst fear in mind, Winston's phobia of rats is realized when he has a cage of the ravenous rodents strapped to his face. In your case, it is rats. <laughs> Ultimately, the punishment finally breaks his spirit, and Winston's re-education is complete for the story's dark and depressing finale. Hurt's cries and whimpers truly highlight the horror of Winston's situation. Number two, I am not an animal, the Elephant Man. As we've seen, John Hurt's handling of a character's desperate situation is second to none, but this is the actor at his most moving. Playing the eponymous Elephant Man, John Merrick, he's unmasked at a London train station by cruel commuters who are shocked by his deformities. <laughs> Chased by the mob until he's cornered in the toilets, John Hurt roars Merrick's immortal line. I am not an animal! I am a human being! A short outburst stacked with emotion, it gives an instant insight into Merrick's tragic position as someone whose only wish is to be treated with dignity and respect. Number one, the chest burster, Alien. Could we ever have ended on anything else? In Ridley Scott's sci-fi horror masterpiece, John Hurt's cane is central to one of cinema's scariest and most gruesome scenes. The first thing that I'm gonna do when I get back is to get some decent food. Having previously been attacked by an alien egg parasite, Kane's apparent good health doesn't last long, as Hurt's character starts to choke before writhing on the table in agony. <laughs> the food ain't that bad, oh, baby. Okay. A sudden spurt of blood signals the iconic arrival of the titular monster, before it drives itself out of Kane's chest in fantastically gory fashion. It all lies on the alien, but Hurt brings breathtaking tension for an unforgettable movie moment. <coughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.